What's up, everybody? Seth here to hopefully level up your fandom again. Um, I've been playing a lot of VR lately. I also have a podcast, the Space Castle. You can see it right here on my jacket. It's pretty sweet. Um, we do a bunch of shows. You should check it out. But in that podcast, we talk about nerd shit. But there's a premise of us traveling through the galaxy on this fictional spaceship. And I was playing Demio recently with some friends, and we went onto their like a uh, party room sort of situation with a couple of us. And it made me realize like, Hey, this is awesome. And also I've been wanting to make a VR game. So why don't I just make a VR version of the space castle handful of floors. We'll have our same thing. It'll match our, our discord. We'll have a, a screening deck, a recreation deck, you know, things like that. Right. And uh, so this is that. This is a devlog of that process. Let's get into it. Okay, so first, um, I've decided to make this VR game. It's more of a multiplayer social hangout space that has some mini games and stuff in it. So that will dictate some requirements. Um, this devlog is gonna be more of an introduction uh, to that process and then each one will be some other part of the process um, you'll see all of the failings and ups and downs and things I decide and how I decide to put them in or take them out or why I decided to design it this way or whatever so with that we need to decide on a few things um, first I tend to outline all of like my novels or short stories, the D&D &D campaigns, things like that in a program called Milanote, which is dope. And I love Milanote. Uh, however, for this process, I want to create the design doc outline sort of feature set, wish list, in progress to do all of that stuff. I want to create that in Trello um, for one very specific reason, and that is so that I can easily share that Trello board with the patreon chat in our discord um so that the our, our patrons the space castle patrons can help make decisions like what sort of mini games to go in to each floor like what hand models do we want like what stuff like that just so that we can collectively as a community sort of come up with some decisions um which is why i'm doing it in trello trello is pretty cool uh so what i've got here you'll see this trello board is kind of already in progress because I decided to record this process about a day or so into designing this this game and I'm gonna refer to it as a game even though it's more of like a social VR space the game is just easy to understand so this game uh, this is how I'm setting up this Trello board you can see this leftmost column is all just labels it is so that the rest of the organizational structure will make more sense to people in the discord chat who are just popping in to see the Trello board to see what's on the feature list or whatever. So it's super clear for people that don't have a whole lot of information about the Trello. Um, just to go through it really, really quickly, we've got a core must have feature, level one need, level two need, really nice to have things and nice to have things. Uh, and those are in order of importance. So core, it's it's a must-have feature it has to be in the things like it needs to be in vr because <laughs> like you can't have a vr game without vr that like truly core level stuff is is that and you can see some of the boards there's like elevators between decks that's incredibly important because how else are you going to go between the decks we've already kind of established an elevator sort of canon in in the fiction during the podcast um over the years so but some of these are already kind of established Level one needs are things that are really important to the gameplay or functionality, but aren't MVP level important. They're not minimum viable product. So it will still function as a VR social space without the level one needs, but it's not, it's not finished. I wouldn't consider it finished without the level one needs implemented. Level two is similar, but less important. Um, really nice to have are more like wish list level things like stuff that I would really like to implement, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Things like customizable avatars is a perfect one for really nice to have. That would be great to be able to put 
shirts on your torso or change gloves or whatever. But if we don't get to that um, in a reasonable amount of time, that's okay. Nice to have things are purely wish list items. They are things that might be fun, things that might be nice to have on the on the space castle, but not important. If we don't get to them, we don't get to them. It's fine. Um, one really easy example is the persistent whiteboard. Having a whiteboard on the ship might be really fun to just draw notes or have DT, one of my co-hosts, just draw dicks on it, whatever. Uh, that kind of stuff would be really fun, but if it doesn't make it in, that's okay. It's not important to, to what we're crafting here. I have split my Trello set into two main sort of columns. You've got a feature wish list and a technical wish list. The feature thing is what we've been talking about so far. It's elevators, uh, adjustable avatars, things like that. The technical wish list is features that are purely from a technical standpoint, like spawn points or FPS targets, um, render pipeline levels, things like that. Uh, sort of technic the same sort of breakdown of importance. Uh, core, your level one, level two needs, all of that is still on both lists, but one is more ideas and one is more technical. I do have a third board here that is just the ideas wish list. That one is purely speculative. That's for like, hey, it might be really fun to have a bowling alley. Toss it in that list. That's that's the catch all list of whatever ideas. Then to progress through my trailer board, because apparently that's what we're doing. I have an in the works, in testing, and deploy. Those are, you know, more or less standard sort of progression boards. You can see the idea of how that all works. You can see I have a full space castle skeleton in the works, and we'll go over that in a, for, in a future episode. Um, but this is the Trello board. This is how I'm deciding to lay it out now. That will likely change as this process continues, but you will be there for that as well. Okay, next decision that needs to be made is what engine am I going to be using to make this game? Um, I have some previous Unity experience, but I also have some previous Unreal Engine experience. I think I think I would like to do it in Unreal Engine 5, just because Nanite and Lumen are sick and would offer some serious uh, visual fidelity to this game, which I think is important for a sci-fi social space. I think that will really help sell the whole ambience and make it more of a place to hang out, right? Um, but Unity is easy and familiar. Unreal Engine 5 does not really support VR very well right now. Um, it has a lot of quirks, things like Lumen doesn't work in VR yet as of, the, as of recording. Um, Nanite is kind of a pain in the butt. And then I would also have to write most of my, my game in C++, kind of raw, which is okay. I'm down to learn a new language. I am a developer after all, that's what we do. But I already know C Sharp, which is helpful. I'm pretty familiar with that syntax. Um, and Unity has kind of a whole VR suite already. There's tools I can use, which I plan on doing. There is um, kind of a community built around making VR games in Unity already. It is a much more common thing to do. And I think for something like this, which happens to be my first VR game, Unity might be the better option. So let's just make a decision now. Let's just go with Unity. Unreal Engine 5 is just not up to the ease of use standards for VR that I need for this game. So we're going with Unity. Unity is a good engine. I like it anyways. But that's one decision made. Okay, next up, we need to... Uh, make a decision on a hand interaction utility. So, um, because I don't want to code hand physics uh, from scratch, um, because that's honestly that's one of my biggest apprehensions for VR is getting the the hand tracking and and controller interaction working well. Uh, because I don't want to do that because that will take a whole bunch of time. I'm going to use a framework, and I've got two in mind. Um, first is Auto Hand. Second is Hurricane VR. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna load them up on my, my quest here. Um, and we'll just hop into the demos. Each of them have a, a demo that we can hop into and we'll just see how I feel about either one of them. Uh, see which one I like most. 
and then we'll just pick one and go from there. The reason I want to do this now is so that I can start building scenes kind of around this framework, like um, Auto Hand and, and Hurricane both have a bunch of assets and um, scripts and stuff kind of already built in and, and packaged with them. So I don't want to, I want to know if I need to code up a, a, a key UI and a key like set of scripts or not that, that kind of thing so we're going to pick out this framework and then build out kind of the rest of the game sort of around this particular framework so we're going to do that right now okay so first things first we're going to go to unknown sources because i have the auto hand demo in here so we'll just do that because that'll be first and easiest Okay. I'm also recording this in square aspect ratio from the stream so that I don't have to worry about the cropping of the image. Okay. A pretty cool scene. Um, I really like these hands and they, they track pretty close to my real hands already. They're a little bit outside so I'd have to tweak it a little bit like that so it fits my hands but the interaction is good. So it's grabbable. I, I really like, so auto hand has procedural hand grabbing its fingers, which are really good. Like you can see, you can see how, how easy and quick it kind of grabs everything. The physics seem spot on too, which is good with hand grabbing. Pretty good. I've got grab type one. I like the the highlighting too. That's that's pretty good. Um, yeah, typical. You can see flat fingers, or if I grab it on the cone, it kind of pinches. Nice touch with the pinky there, like that. That's nice. Yeah, the procedural hand grabbing is pretty good. Um, let's see here. We've got this is kind of. Oh, we've got two hands, which is cool. Rad. Kind of what I expect. Dynamic joints. Okay. So, oh, I like that snap. Okay, that's cool. Rip. I thought I had to let go. Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's just move on let's see we've got grabbing seems really great these bottles have l and r on them so i'm assuming yeah oh interesting i can't grab that with my right just like i'm not gonna weird okay it's weird that it just kind of snaps to the next nearest one Nice, okay, some built-in stuff, weighted. Okay, and this, you can see the inertia here. Okay, I, I, that's that's kind of nice. So then I'm assuming weightless will have none of that. Yeah, no kind of weighted inertia. Oh, and it actually, it takes, look, check this out. It takes um, extra effort to snatch because it the physics engine actually takes weight into concern that's really awesome got our joints with this nice kind of measurement here cool glad to know that that's kind of already in place key placement point accepts a specific key probably this key but this interesting i don't what's interesting here is the default i don't have to let go I'm holding on to the key, keeping the, the grip button pressed, but if I just put it into this bubble, it will automatically let go of it. That's interesting, and I actually kind of don't like that. Key interaction, oh, friendship, oh, it was the gift that keeps on giving. Parking spot. Okay, okay, it's got a little, little bit of snap, but like, what happens? Yeah, I guess 
I guess it kind of sticks to it. Whereas this one, like I can still place it here, right? But it doesn't kind of stick. That's interesting. I'm assuming it's the same for these other colored place points. Where, yeah, see how it like snaps to it? But if I put it here, it'll just rest. No snapping involved. Okay. That's, that's good. No other difference. Let's see here. We got distance grabbing. Press the grip button, which will give us a little laser pointer finger. Okay. Interesting kind of highlighting on that with like the, the faces kind of exploded out. I'm not sure if that's on purpose. But we've got velocity and then we've got instant and then we have linear. Oh, linear is what I want out of that. Oh, nice. Linear is what, what I want, I think, because that's the, the velocity style is like very much, you know, Half-Life Alex, and I'm, I'm not really into that. I like the linear. Let's see here. Yeah. I like, I like the linear. Okay. Uh, tiny hammer. <laughs> I, I really like the physics that they've applied here. Uh, nice hand pose too. I'm, I like that there, this seems to be pretty posable here. So you can see when I grab this, you've got this particular pose. This is not procedural, right? It's, it grabs instantly on the handle. So if I try to grab here, it'll just snap to the handle with this pose. Same thing with this gun. You've got this, this sort of pose with all of my fingers. I like that. Um, especially, yeah, I can't. If I try to grab, it'll just snap to the pose. That's really convenient. I mean, I guess, yeah, cool. This one doesn't take it out of my hand like the key one did. So that must be a setting then. Interesting, can I? Oh, I can't just grab this, okay. Okay, but I, I just have to place it, got it, okay. Stickies and stabbing. This one's in beta. Probably because it's got some complicated math. I'm assuming, okay, look, green, green. I'm assuming that this kind of sticks. Oh, the, the default sort of acceleration here is kind of weird. The throw multiplayer is kind of weird, but good. I, I, like, I like this a lot. Sticking is great. Let's try the stabbing, because that's something I'm really interested in, because I think that would be pretty hard to do. Oh, did you see how it weighted down? Look at that. Here, hold on. Let me grab this from like the end. Look. You see how you see how when I let go of the block, it like pulls this down, like it's actually just accepting the weight. That's interesting. Physics based. Cool. Um seeing a weird color departure here oh did you see that look at this it snaps the 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 distance grab laser snaps to the thing that is super helpful I like that a lot and it's not it's not a big snap you got to be fairly close but it's just enough I like that a lot cool I mean yeah it's all it's like physics physics based snapping this one seems to have different friction than the square bit i like it good settings good settings nope <laughs> okay okay we're into other gadgets here i see a floating hand which is weird but that's that's fine nice little snap thing it doesn't turn very much which i guess shows that you can break it off, but that's, it's got some weird force here. Okay. Just some levers that do some stuff. Interesting. All right. Where is this? Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. So this one is like stuck. So the interaction only moves the joystick, which is convenient. This one is free flowing. So if you grab the joystick, it picks the whole thing up. But if you hold on to it, you can change the direction of the stick. That's really nice. 
a little dial I like. You know what? Let me shut that. You know what's interesting? This dial doesn't... I had... Okay. I had thought when I grabbed this, it would go to a snapped pose. Kind of... Like this on the, on the dial part of this dial. But actually, it just procedurally grabs it. Which, I'm not sure... I'm not sure if I like that better or not. I mean, I'm sure I can just add a a little snap pose right there, right? But that, maybe I, maybe I do like it. That's that is interesting. It's good to know too that it's not default behavior. Solid buttons. Solid. What's next? UI. Oh, okay. So we can interact with the UI here with our physical hands, which is really convenient. What does untouch mean? Oh. Touch, untouch. Got it. It's a. It's not a toggle. It's a push button. This one's a toggle. Okay. So it kind of. You can see. These are physical planes because they they move my hand as I try to move my hand past them, which is interesting. But it just detects the the collision. I'm assuming. And we have hand area. Grab and squeeze. Oh, okay, so this just cool. So the grab and the squeeze both have discrete functions. That's nice. Are you enjoying auto hand? Okay, this is like kinematic or whatever. Yeah, toggle is kinematic. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I don't, I don't really like the grab distance here because I want I want to point for this but if I try to if I try to point this close it will just grab oh maybe if I'm not pointing at it yeah weird it's not it's not super clear but it does seem to have an automatic ray cast pointer thing whenever you're pointing at a UI See, okay, so if I'm if I am pointing at it, it I don't know. I don't I don't know the grab distance and, and mechanics here. Uh, but I kinda don't I kinda that thing I think needs some tweaking. The motion stuff, I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Um, moving around is great. This doesn't seem to have any kind of teleportation built in. Oh, oh, oh okay. I have to click the thumbstick in this demo. That teleportation is what I, I want to be the default uh, because some of the people using this game I know will get motion sick by movement like this so I would want to make teleportation the default which is good that it's here then we've just got physics stuff increased drag on the atmosphere I guess bouncy figure physics okay awesome no gravity, increased drag. Okay. Interesting. The one the one with drag exploded and is just or the one without drag is just gone. It is kinematic. With infantry breaking force or infinity breaking force. What does that mean? What is infinity breaking? So I thought that would mean that it wouldn't break off, but I guess I mean it doesn't break for like a while, so I guess that's uh Ooh. I wish the friction was better, so I could just spin it. But grabbing it and spinning it is at least a thing. But then you can see it like slows down because you have to like let go. Interesting. Freeze X wipe position, position, <laughs> and bouncy physics material. Okay. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. I, so far. The physics are great, and the thing I want to test with this is the thing that I hey, let me let me where am I? Camera, I think. The thing I want to test with this is is the hands, right? The grabbing is is what I'm really here to to figure out, and that that seems pretty strong. I mean, it's called auto hand, so I assume it would be, but that's this is what I'm gonna be using, right? So I'm glad that 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 seems great. It, it seems good. Let's uh, let's check out. Oh, there's the the no gravity sphere that was over there. 
a weird grab. Cool. Does it? Can this break? See, this is break apart. So squeeze break. Oh. So this is a grab and this is a squeeze. So if I grab it, it'll just grab. But if I press the trigger, it will squeeze and break. That's a cool mechanic. How small can these get? Oh, are these procedural? Oh, damn. Oh, whoa. Oh my gosh, it's so small. I'd still cast a cool shadow though. Look at this tiny little bitch. I got it. Oh, I see it. I see it in there. Oh, I can break it even smaller. Look at the spec. And it still interacts with, this is cool. I actually really, this might be the coolest part of this whole thing so far, besides the actual just hand interaction. I can still grab it, okay. Okay, I'm gonna try to break this tiny one apart. Oh, I heard it and felt it, but I don't see the pieces. They're too tiny. We broke it into infinity. We did it. Goodbye. Oh, oh, right there. Look. Oh, I found them. Now they're gone forever. Okay. Well, that was fun. <laughs> I might need to put one of these in in the space castle just because it's it's fascinating. There's something really really cool about floating geometry in VR. Being able to move around stuff is so cool. Like the casting a shadow on my hand like this, the, it, that there's something about that that's just so cool. I like that a lot. Um, okay, cool. Hand physics is great. Uh, auto hand is great. Cool, I like it. I'm not gonna punch that guy, it's fine. Let's check out Hurricane. Okay, so first things first, need to get out of unknown sources because there's no Quest 2 APK version of the Hurricane VR demo. So I'm just going to open up Virtual Desktop, hop into my computer, giant slab of aluminum on my desk. So I'll call it Milner. Hey, look at that. Cool background. So then I'm just going to run this thing, which is the Hurricane VR demo. It'll open up Steam VR. Okay. So here we are, Hurricane VR. Looks like uh, another sort of gymnasium situation, which is cool, but a lot of the same sort of things, targets and I see levers and hammers. We've got fleshy VR hands, which I definitely hate. I hate flesh VR hands so much, but you can see they've got pretty good sort of touch Kind of a weird sort of yeah pretty good like touch button interactions here um so i mean let's go here code driven grabbing so that button will pop this to my body but let's just grab it pretty good little grab you can tell the weight here oh man the physics is stiff I like these little UI indicators the circles of where where the hands gonna be when I grab it that's nice okay nice like pull up um, why are my fingers up Oh, okay, so that's backwards of what I would have thought. So you can see, let me grab down here. With just the trigger buttons held, it holds fast on the, on the object. But if I pull the trigger, then it like loosens. Oh, oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no. But that's the opposite of what I would think. I would think holding less would be like a medium grip that would slide and then holding more would not, but oh no. Um, 
Okay. Just uh, programmatically grab stuff, so that's convenient. What do we got here? Socketed on start, so I presume when the level loads, this will be in a socket, which is nice. Two grab points. Okay, so you can see this one, it's got that little UI circle, but not... Why is it? Uh, but only in that one spot. So that's, that's kind of nice. Bye. Uh, okay, small items. Cool. Grab points. Okay. You can see that I can stow it. That's nice. I like the, the stowing interaction here. Socket it. Oh. Okay. This chest looks like anything will be socketable, and all you have to do is put it in there. It'll go into the first place as soon as I let go, so I'm presuming over there. Yeah, cool. That's nice. What about this thing? Oh. Hello. Okay, the physics is a little much. Okay. Cool. It's convenient. And we've got our typical sort of lever. And then crowbar. This is kind of what we were talking about with the grab points and the two hand grab earlier. Bouncy. This has some serious weight to it. You can see how much it's just. Whoa, the weight just pulls it way out of alignment with my hand. Okay, I can't do that anymore, it's freaking me out. Okay, two hand grab, just just like we had talked. It, it kind of is a weird sort of position. It's kind of hard to grab what I actually want, okay. I can see this two hand thing here. Cool, 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 okay. And it works this way. Nice, okay. I can dig it. Oh, oh. Well, okay. This is gonna be hard to explain. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me grab like one of these. Oh, come, come. Okay. Okay, look. So you can see how when I've got two hands on this thing, I can try and move it, move it around. The both hands are interacting and have like friction and force applied to this object, right? When I let go, I've, I've got the one hand, but I can't do that with both hands applied, right? It's still attached to this, this hand. However, what are you doing? Okay, however, with the gun, when I've got both hands here, this right hand that's on the grip becomes the only thing that moves the gun. My left hand, while attached, is has no force applied, no friction, no nothing. Like, look, look, there's nothing here, right? And I can still, like, pull the slide back if I move my controller in the direction of the slide right now so right now it's like forward and like no it's it's really disorienting actually um don't i yeah i do not like this oh well so that's interesting i don't like that though the the force on the hands is really really weird oh my gosh <laughs> the Everything is so physics specific that it's really disorienting. Can I? What? I, I just want, I just want the knife. Okay. Stabbing is a, is a thing that I've definitely heard about Hurricane VR. I've heard, I've heard about the stabbing mechanic in Hurricane VR before. So I'm, I'm expecting this to be interesting. Explosive confetti. Okay. 
This one sticks a lot. I feel like some serious friction, which is why it says high friction. The locks, I don't know about. Does that mean no movement there? Okay. This is medium friction, one inch shell. I don't know what the shell means just yet. And then this is low friction. Does that mean that it'll slide out? It will, interesting. The shells say, the shells, I see, says outer shell damper, friction applied until a stabber has entered past the outer shell thickness. So I guess that means that, okay. Okay. Ah, uh, that's interesting. One inch shell, that's, that's pretty interesting. A ladder, which I will not be using. And then we've got like, let's see here. Can you crack the safe? Nice little knob. Oh, it's a little bit procedural, but it also has a sort of snap mechanic to it. That's really nice. I'm not gonna try to crack the safe. Limited lever, I think that means probably just limited in the X, Y direction and reverse, which I think is the same, just has a different display up top. Okay, we got a wheel, which has a weird sort of grab, not grab, and then a key probably that I'm seeing right over there. One, two, three, four. Okay. HVR rotation limiter. Oh, I don't like that. That animation. Oh, it's also reversed. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's kind of nice. I like that. Cool. That's pretty useful. Oh, and then we have like an elevator. So this is like a thing that I would totally use in the Space Castle VR game. It's like an elevator door with a keypad. Totally the kind of thing I would use. These buttons are kind of weird though. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I mean, not too bad. The buttons aren't too small. I mean, they're kind of small, but it's not too bad. The, the finger is just kind of weird. It doesn't match up with my actual finger at, almost at all, but these elevator doors like it's totally a thing i would use so then we've got a locked door okay okay can't seem to do anything there so let's put this in i i don't like the animations in this demo <laughs> which i'm hoping aren't just default for the keyway or for the framework oh nice i like that this door has a latch like you can see I can pull on it and nothing happens until it clicks open I like that that's nice I assume that this is the same just unlocked yeah cool okay let's head over to the target range here bows and arrows pull the string past its limit and it will shoot the arrow pull the string past the limit it will drop the arrow stop the hand or just grabbing the string will spawn an arrow let's start with that one Okay, okay, I can catch things. So I can still put an arrow in this, but grabbing it will just spawn one, that's nice. And it, it'll it limit, like the hand says, so that's nice for aiming. You can see more stabbing mechanic there. Cool. What? Oh, do I have, I, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I do have a backpack. Okay, well, that's where the bow and arrow went. And it's cool, like, inventory system. I like that. Oh, it just goes back. Okay. Pulling the string stops the hand. Okay, that's not what I wanted to grab, but that's fine. Yeah, this is the same. So it looks like this is the same thing, but with the same thing as the spawning an arrow but it doesn't spawn one i think the stopping is probably the one i'm gonna want pulling a string past its limits why wait what is what is this what, what is this 
Why can't I grab that one? Oh yeah, dude, dropping, dropping the arrow sucks, for sure. Okay, so just pulling it will just shoot. I mean, that's kind of nice. It makes me feel a little bit like Legolas, but you don't have a lot of time to aim there. Not a huge fan. Okay, let's go to this last one, which I'm assuming is guns. Yeah, that's what it looks like. This Hurricane VR seems like it's a lot more combat focused than like hand mechanics-y focus. You know what I'm you know what I mean? Oh. See, okay, this is what I was dealing with over there. Look, I how do I how do I grab this one? I mean, how do I grab that one? This first one. Look. What I have to be I have to actually grab it. Oh. Is that this hand? Yeah. What how come I can't grab the one right in front of my hand? You see the indicators are all like the gun, the other thing. What? Okay. I mean, yeah, it's like, cool. Got some physics. Whoa. Whoa. Major physics. The reset button, is it? It is. Hey, cool. Oh. Okay. I like, yeah. I like that the reset button doesn't affect what's actually in my hand. So like you can see this first one is in the gun and the first gun, it doesn't actually, that's really nice. That's crazy though. It's got pretty good like rigid body physics as long as you're not interacting with it. Like, see, like just like that. <sighs> and these hands get stuck on everything like there's I don't know maybe the fiction friction is too high on them I'm not I'm not sure but it, they feel they just feel cl clunky which I don't like you can see like it's just like even this little just the tip of my finger here gets so stuck but it, it still respects the orientation of my controller. So if I like move my hand way out of the way, it'll still like turn the hand, even though it's like stuck. And then my thumb is stuck, so it doesn't, it's kind of a weird sort of physics interaction there, which I don't really like that much. I got the, let's see the button. See, <laughs> hand got stuck on the glass. Okay, this has like some weight to it. Not like the, the the other hammer, the sledgehammer, which was so heavy it would just twist my hand around. This has some weight and it's a kind of a cool model of Mjolnir, that's cool. Can't break anything with it though, I guess. Well, that's not too bad. Okay, honestly, I mean, I expected a little bit more based on how highly everybody talks about this, but the hand interactions are kind of, whoa. Oh, X is crouch. I see, okay. The hand interactions are kind of like, not super polished compared to auto hand. And it, it seems like this is more FPS focused, like a combat focused, whereas auto hand is more like framework focused, I guess, I'm not really sure. How to say that? Okay, let's. Oh, the bolt is up here. I see. Whoa! Holy kick, Batman! Okay, that's better. Not a lot of ammo here. So, you know, this might just be how this demo is set up with the the animations and snap points but if I try to grab this magazine it will just move to this this thing I don't know it feels it just feels not as polished I guess is what I'm going with the physics rigid body physics in unity is so good though um, okay yeah I think I think that's enough for me to draw a conclusion at least 
all right folks there you have it um decision made we're gonna go with auto hand vr because i like auto hand i'll tell you why real fast high overview of why i decided auto hand over hurricane vr auto hands uh hand mechanics were really good they they felt really fluid they felt truer to life uh hurricane vr uh the selection mechanic like trying to select a thing to pick up was a pain in the ass and it barely worked at all i couldn't select anything that i actually wanted to the hands got stuck on everything the physics interactions were weird whereas hurricane vr felt more like a i need to make a fps game in vr very quickly auto hand vr felt more like i'm need to use this as a hands framework for making a game in vr and that's what i'm looking for and that's what i want that's what it felt like I think auto hand is the better better way to go it's also cheaper which is great um it's a bit more open the developer has a trello board uh, that you can see what they're working on which is great uh I, I think i like auto hand much better than hurricane vr so that's what i'm going with space castle vr is going to be built in unity it's going to be built using auto hand vr i'm going to track it with trello It'll be available for patrons to also suggest features and track the Trello board as well. Um, yeah. Step one complete. We've made some decisions. Next episode, uh, I'm going to sketch out the layout of the space castle so I can get like a floor plan. So I know where to start putting stuff. Um, which you've kind of already seen if you've seen the Trello board section of this video. Uh, we'll go through that and I'll tell you why I made those decisions and how things are getting laid out and then we're gonna block it out Just put some planes in some areas and in unity and hop into VR with auto hand and see How that's gonna go All right. Thanks for watching um, Bye <laughs>